This is Alex McGregor with Chasing Luminance Photography, and I've gotten a couple requests recently to make a video all about photographing the area of Orion and processing those images to bring out the most details in the nebulas and the H-alpha gases. Even if you're shooting on an unmodified camera, like most of us are, you can still get some amazing pictures of the nebulosity in this area. So that's what today's video is all about photographing and processing Orion. But you can see there's still some light coming through the window. So we have some time before we need to get out there. So I wanna do a little bit of an experiment with this new Sony camera and test the autofocus. So I have three things here and I wanna see how well this little Sony can track them. Okay, first thing. All right, that looked like it did pretty good. Okay, second thing. Yep, autofocus is working. All right, third thing. Now this might be a little bit tricky, but let's see. Nailed it. Tonight, I brought you guys up to Sapphire Point, which sits right in between Keystone and Breckenridge, Colorado, and has a gorgeous overlook of the town of Frisco and some of the mountains that are right there. So I'm gonna set up my Move Shoot Move rotator with my Canon 6D and Tamron 24-70 2.8G2. We're gonna take some pictures of Orion. I've got to turn off the loom cube so I can see the laser. Okay, laser looks pretty good. Now I'm going to put on the camera. Okay, now taking a quick picture to make sure I like my alignment. I'm pointed a little too low, so I'm gonna aim it up just a little bit. Now I like my alignment, I'm gonna turn the rotator on and increase the exposure time. I'm getting perfectly sharp stars at two minutes, I'm gonna to try to increase. Trying for four minutes on this one. Okay, so I'm getting absolutely pinpoint sharp stars at four minutes. I'm gonna zoom into 35 millimeters and then let this run. Okay, so I got this running. It's going for four minutes at ISO 1600 and F4. So I'm gonna leave this run as long as it can and get as much data as possible. It helps bring out all the nebulas and everything. I don't mean to do this, but it is kind of fun. So these cameras are working away and creating the content that you've been seeing for this video, but I'm actually taking the time to grab my RX100 and see if it can see in the dark. Is it a good enough camera to actually be able to shoot the stars with? So that'll be my next video. Watch out for that. And now we'll get back to shooting Orion. Okay, so I got some solid images of Orion and Sirius. They're gonna stack up perfectly. So now I need to turn the rotator off and orient the camera so I can take a picture of the foreground. A quick note about the foreground, I was gonna go down lower and shoot an image without any of these trees in the front. And you'll see in just a minute what I'm talking about. But then I got to thinking and I spent more time up here and I actually really like how the trees look. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Should I have gone down lower and removed the trees from the foreground or do we like how it looks? All right, I'm gonna shoot these shots and then I will see you back at my computer. Whew, I am so glad to be back inside. It was getting a little bit chilly out there. So I got myself a coffee 
in my little plant. We're ready to make some edits. Jumping into Lightroom, I pulled up our best pictures here. You can see there's eight of them that I've selected. And I shot 10 total exposures on the tracker, but two of them had little tiny star trailing, so maybe the wind blew or something happened. That is to be expected when you're tracking for this long, is that not all of them are gonna be perfect. So 80% I think is pretty good. Now I'm just gonna make some real basic edits to this first image. What I did to it is bring down the highlights and shadows a bit, increase the contrast by upping the whites and decreasing the blacks. And then down here, I added my profile corrections and my chromatic aberration. You can see the difference this made in cleaning up some of that vignetting in the corners. So pretty basic Lightroom edits before we stack these images of Orion. To synchronize all of these edits, I'm gonna click on my first one, shift click on my last one, and go to sync settings, and make sure all of these boxes are checked and hit synchronize. Now with all of these still selected, I'm going to open them up into Photoshop by right clicking, going to edit in, and we're going to merge to panorama in Photoshop. The reason we clicked merge to panorama as opposed to just open in Photoshop is because we want Photoshop to correct any variations in the tracking and automatically align the stars together for us. So this program will do that aligning perfectly, but we have to make sure we uncheck the box that says blend images together because then it will pretty much delete all of the data. Now Photoshop is done creating this panorama for us where it aligned all of our stars. And if we unclick all the ones in the middle, and leave the top two, we can check and see how well Photoshop did it aligning and it did a perfect job. If we just watch one of the brighter stars like this one Sirius and see if it moves at all in between and no, it stays perfectly still. So we know that all the rest of these will be aligned properly. So we're gonna re-enable all of them. Choose our top one, shift click our bottom one, right click and go convert to smart object. Now that that smart object is made, we can change the blending mode of it by going up to layer, down to smart objects, stack mode, and we're going to click median. Now what we're really doing here is telling Photoshop to ignore all of the random noise, which you can kind of think of like static on an old TV where it's moving around all crazy, and just choose the good signal from these images and stack that. And by doing that, it eliminates all of the noise and all the other like random stuff like airplanes or even some of the clouds will go away to some extent by doing this. It's a really great tool and you can even use it during the day. If you're photographing in a crowded area with people moving through, you can just take picture after picture, stack it in the same way and all of the people which are random will disappear. So there's a lot of good uses for this type of stack. And now going into 100%, we can see that most of the noise is gone. It really does look a lot nicer. Especially if we look down in this Orion region, you can see a lot of this nebulosity is starting to come out and none of that noise came with it. So this is what we're going to be working with. And we're gonna copy this smart object three times and we're gonna work it in three separate ways. We're going to name this bottom one color. We're going to name this middle one DET for detail and this top one NEB for nebulosity. Now we're going to edit these using a technique that's called the LRGB processing, which stands for luminance, red, green, blue. And what we're really doing is we're making a high contrast luminance layer to blend with another layer, which contains all of our color information. And in doing so, we can bring out a lot of the data that's trapped in these files. So we're just gonna have our color layer visible and we're going to remove a lot of the brightest stars by doing a dust and scratches filter. Now we can adjust this radius so most of the brightest stars are eliminated and then adjust this threshold to bring back some of the good detail in this image. Right about there looks good, click OK. And we can also add a Gaussian blur to this image. About five pixels for the radius. 
now we can right click that layer and convert it to a smart object. Now enabling the detail layer, we can add a black and whites adjustment layer. Now we want to adjust all these sliders to bring out the most contrast in the image. Most of the sky is re registering blue, so I'm probably going to drop those a little bit to enhance the stars a little bit more. And now our nebulosity will look pretty magenta, so I'm going to increase this a good bit. And adjusting the cyan down can also help to decrease the vividness of the sky and enhance the nebulosity. Now we can add a curves adjustment layer to increase the contrast in the image by bringing down the shadows, bringing up the highlights. All right, gonna add just a little bit of roll off to preserve detail in the Orion Nebula. And we're gonna combine these with the detail layer to create a new smart object. Now choosing the nebula layer, we're going to add the same noise and Gaussian blur that we did to our color layer. And we can add another black and white adjustment layer and really go a little bit further to try to increase the nebulosity. Bringing up the magentas, bringing down the blues and cyans just a bit. We want to be really careful with the cyan because if we move it all the way, we can see that it's starting to just destroy all of the stars. And we're gonna combine all of these adjustments into a new smart object. Now we're gonna combine our detail layer and our nebulosity layer to create a luminosity layer. First, we're gonna disable our nebulosity. We can select our details layer and hit Control A to select the entire thing and Control C to copy this layer. Now, re-enabling our nebulosity layer, we want to select it and add a layer mask by clicking this button right here. Now we're going to alt-click our layer mask to select it. Now we can hit Control v to paste our detail layer into this mask. Now we're going to invert this mask by hitting Control i Now reselecting our nebulosity layer, we can see how this brought out a lot of detail in there. Now we can add an adjustment layer to this by choosing our levels and tweaking this just a bit more to bring out as much contrast as possible. Right about there looks good. Now we can combine our adjustment layer, our nebulosity layer, and our detail layer into a new group. We're gonna change this group's blending mode to luminosity. Now we have a good high contrasty image and we can see more of this nebula throughout Orion, but we need to do a hue and saturation adjustment to bring out even more detail. We can also do a bit of a color balance. Now with all of these edits done, we can select all of our layers, right click and hit merge layers. From here, we can add a few adjustments in camera raw filter to really bring this image home. In camera raw, I'm gonna increase the contrast by boosting the highlights just a bit dropping the shadows, doing the same with the whites and the blacks. I'm gonna drop the clarity just a bit and the texture, which helps to make this image look a little cleaner. And I'm gonna increase the contrast with the dehaze just slightly. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of color correcting by increasing our vibrance and saturation all the way to the maximum. And you can see how it's predominantly blue, so I'm going to warm it up just a little bit. And I'm going to bring this tint towards the green side just a little, and then bring our vibrance and saturation back down. Now I can adjust the nebulosity even more by going to the HLS sliders and playing with the magenta and the purple. There's a pretty strong gradient over this whole thing, so I'm going to correct that to some extent by adding a graduated filter. Because I was shooting over this light pollution from the town, it's blowing out this bottom portion quite a bit. So I'm going to add a bunch of dehaze to this bottom section and bring down the highlights and the whites. Now we have a nice high contrasty image where you can see a lot of detail in Bernard's loop and the 
Flame Nebula and Orion Nebula, and it looks much, much different than what we started off with working with in Lightroom. So you can see these tricks definitely helped us to bring out a ton of data. The last thing I'm gonna do is a star reduction action, but before that, I wanna copy this layer one more time in case we get too out of control with our star reduction. Now that this action is done working, we see that it did delete a lot of the stars, but maybe more than I really wanted it to. That's why I copied this layer, so I can change this opacity and have exactly as much detail as I want in this image. I think right about there looks good. Now we can move over to my foreground image, which I already deleted the sky out of. If you want uh, more instructions for how to delete the sky and blend these images together, you can click on this video right here. I'm just going to enable our sky layer and see that this is our final product. So I know this has been kind of technical and maybe annoying to follow, but I promise you, if you do make a practice of following these steps exactly, you can bring out so much more information, especially with a modified camera. You can almost replicate the results you would get with an Astro modded camera. So it's pretty cool to see what other detail is locked into those files. It just needs brought out in Photoshop. So I hope this video has been helpful and you can play around tweaking your own images to see what else is locked away in those files. Stay tuned for that next video where I actually take out this Sony RX100 and do some night photography with it. So that is pretty interesting, the results that we can get from this little point and shoot camera. So if you have enjoyed this video, please give me that thumbs up, comment your thoughts or any questions you might have, subscribe for more videos and be sure to hit that bell notification. And when the stars are out, I'll see you there.